Hi and hello everyone. What we have been seeing uh, in the previous lecture was this renewal processes and the related ideas. Okay. So, what we will see next, what we are going to do next is we are want to consider or you know get the idea of a semi Markov process, but before going that you know what we will define is an intermediate process or which is a generalization of uh, this uh, renewal process ideas is what we call it as a regenerative process. Okay. So, what is that? So, this is what we define first, ok. We will come back to the specifics. So, the stochastic process say x t is a continuous time stochastic process is called a regenerative process if there exist time points say t naught is equal to 0 we are assuming of course one can generally also assume that less than or equal to but our, for our purpose we are assuming this t naught less than t1 less than t2 and so on if there exist time points of this nature such that for n greater than or equal to 1 this process what is this you look at carefully here x you know from t n plus t so you are fixing an n for any n for all n this should be true. So, you fix an n then uh, x of t n plus t for t greater than or equal to 0. So, t n is fixed and then plus t, t is greater than or equal to 0. So, this is a process which is starting in t capital T n right. So, this is the process start he is independent of the process x t up to t n right between 0 to t n. So, the process suppose if you take these time points t 1, t 2, t 3 and so on you look at at any point of time this t n you look at the process x before that and after that ok. So, the process which is post this point t n is independent of the process which is pre t n up to the point t n right. So, the history here of the, of the process between 0 to T n does not impact the evolution of the process beyond that point T n. So, these are at this T n only you can talk, you can you are not talking about any general time points, you are talking about there exist time points T 1, T 2 such that this is happening, this is the first property. The second one is basically x of T n plus T and x T have the same distribution right which means that some you you fix small t to be some value a fixer value then the the process if you are looking at it at t n plus t and t this t means as if you are starting at t 0 right you can replace in for a general t naught this will be replaced by t naught plus t. So, here t naught equal to 0 so this is basically t here. So, this all this has the same joint distribution and this T n's are called regeneration epochs or uh, regeneration times or regeneration points and the lengths T 1 minus T naught T 2 minus T 1 are called regeneration cycles. This T n's are I i d random variables and T n defines a renewal process right. So, this T n now you can correlate with x n that we have defined taken for a renewal process is what this T n. So, this T n is connected to S n in the renewal process that we are considered because this is the S n process here. These intervals T 2 minus T 1, T 1 minus T naught uh, is what is what. So, this is basically x 1, this is x 2, this is x 3 and so on. This T n is basically S n that you have it in the renewal process here. So, the renewal process is said to be embedded in this process right and in this process x t at epochs t 1, t 2. So, every time a renewal occurs a cycle is said to be completed because this is what you call it as the renewal cycle. So, you, you completed it right. So, at that point it regenerates itself ok. So, basically that what we have a regenerative process means it is a process where there are certain time points and starting from those time points if you look at the process into the future 
this is exactly same from the probabilistic point of view as the process which are which is starting from zero and going forward okay starting from zero whatever behavior that you would observe you will observe for the for this process starting from that those time points those are all time points which are all called this regeneration points and from that point onwards if you look at the process is just the probabilistic replica of a process that started at zero right that is what the word itself would mean that and then that is what you know you are seeing so this is what is called as a regenerative process okay so a renewal process for example is a regenerative process and that's why the renewal points or renewal times is also called as regeneration points because it's one and the same okay but this has much more generic uh, meaning the tn is what representing the time of the nth renewal which is corresponding to sn there okay so a recurrent markov chain is a regenerative process with tn being the time of nth recurrence right I mean, nth visit to the state any particular state you pick it up right so you are looking at you know it's because it's a recurrent markov chain the process will keep visiting to its itself and then the nth visit is what is you would call this as tn here okay and in an mgcq for example whenever the queue is empty then all servers are idle then only the arrival process double uh, r arrival process has an effect on the future okay so thus the system process if you look at carefully is regenerates at those time points at which the system becomes empty and those time points could be you know nth time empty it becomes empty so that is what will be this tns here so the duration that is between the the successive empty system that you would find right is what either these are iid and hence this mgc system process is a regenerative process right another example is this alternating renewal process so which is just we have described in the case of earlier when we talked about renewal process is a regenerative process is an is an alternative renewal process so you can think about this process as if it is considering that a system can be in one of the two possible states say up state and down state or working state or in repair state and so on so let us call that as state 0 and 1 so initially suppose if you start at state 0 assume that it is in state 0 so it is it remain there for a duration y1 then it changes its state to state 1 where it remains for a duration z1 then it goes back to state 0 for a time y2 and then goes back to again the state 1 with for a time of z2 and so on this goes on so this moment could be depicted as 0 moving to 1 to 0 and so on so this duration is basically y1 and this duration is z1 y2 z2 and so on if the process starts in 1 then of course you will have a different sequence which is starting from 1 that's what it okay now suppose that these two sequences this yns and zns are two sequences of iid random variables of course this two need not be independent but you know these two are within themselves this is an iid sequence this is an iid sequence then tn could be this right you could define it in this manner that yn plus z10 is basically one cycle kind of thing that you can think right and this is what is the successive one where t1 is the process at time t1 the process restarts itself and so on and also at times t2 t3 and so on so the interval which is tn minus tn minus 1 which is basically this yn plus z10 right is the complete cycle so and the process restarts itself after each complete cycle so this is the regeneration point that you have here now expect if expectation of yn is equal to y because this is iid expectation of z10 equal to expectation of z then the long run proportion of the time the system in state 0 and 1 respectively are can be given in terms of this right p not is equal to probability of you find the system is in 0 which is basically the ratio of expectation of y to 
expectation of y plus expectation of z and p1 which is 1 minus p0 is basically equal to this quantity that is also basically this is for renewal, the renewal theory like you know this comes up particularly here okay. But this what is pattern in this particular case alternative renewal process if you are looking at the long term fraction of uh, time or uh, long term proportion of the time the system spends in you know up state or down state is given by this expressions right. So, this is what you know you need to know. Now, this one has uh, you know the results that we just stated has very useful applications in queuing theory right. Now, for example, you can consider a single server queuing system such that an arriving customer is immediately taken for service if the server server is free, uh, but joins a waiting line if the server is busy. Okay. So, the system can be considered to be in two states which is idle and busy according to whether the server is idle or busy. Okay. So, the idle and busy states alternate and together constitute a cycle of an alternating renewal process that is what you know we set as a busy cycle uh, you recall busy period idle period and busy cycle that is basically the cycle here is the uh, of the alternative renewal process. So, a busy period starts as soon as the alternate uh, customer arrives before an ideal server and ends at the instant when the server becomes free for the first time right. So, the epochs of commencement of busy periods are regeneration points. So, this is i n b n denote the length of the nth idle and nth busy periods then you can denote this as the mean of i n to be expectation of i and the mean of b n uh, busy period expectation of b then the long run proportion of the time the server is idle equals this expression and the long run proportion of the time the server is busy is expression. So, we have already used this when we talked about the busy period analysis uh, when we consider the birth death queuing models we wrote this we used this in a way or we showed that if you obtain from the distribution whatever mean that you are obtaining you can you know, obtain through different argument, but well, this is what is one can see. Now, if the arrival process is Poisson with mean lambda t, then it follows that an idle period is exponentially distributed with mean 1 by lambda. So, the expected duration of the busy period, if I know either p naught or p 1, which is the probability of being busy, probability of being idle, which for many systems it can be easily you know at least single server system it can be easily written down right. Then one can easily get if I know one of them I can get the other one right. So, more often it is the ideal in this situation ideal period which is what is very easy to get. So, busy period the mean one can get easily from here ok. So, this is how one can use that uh, alternating renewal process idea in queuing theory as well. Okay. So, now having known what is a regenerative process, we will now come to the semi Markov process and the Markov renewal process. These are connected that is why you know we write this together whenever you know these are treated together. Okay. So, this is a special class of regenerative process and this is very important for analysis of many of our queuing systems. Uh, in fact, uh, you know the real queuing theory if you want to study it starts with this kind of model semi Markov models ok not just Markovian model because there you know you really do not feel the you know the nature of the queuing problems, but when you consider the semi Markovian queues that you know you will really you know feel the nature of this queuing models and queuing problems associated with that and so on. So, that is why for many like people like you know they say that it just starts with the semi Markovian thing only they will consider this as a queuing theory part. So, the Markovian queues though it gives enough ideas for us to generalize to semi Markovian it is after all you know ultimately it is just the Markov CTMC is what then you are studying ok. Of course, here also all processes are stochastic process in that sense ok. So, there is no different. So, we can as well take the Markovian process itself as the starting point. And this particular class this semi Markov process or Markov renewal process 
This class generalizes the Markov processes and the renewal processes also at the same time. Okay, this is a generalization of both Markov process as well as renewal process, but it's a special class of regenerative processes. Okay. Of course, there are further processes one can go further which we are not going. We will stop at semi Markov process only because that is what you need. So, let us first define what is this process is all about. Now, you take a countable state space S, yes. then for every n 0 1 2 you let x n denote a random variable on this state space and T n as a non negative random variable such that T naught equal to 0 and T naught less than strictly less than T 1 less than T 2 and so on such that the supremum of T n tends to infinity almost surely or with probability 1. Now, you define the process y t to be this ok, y, y of t equal to x n for t between t n and t n plus 1 for all t greater than or equal to 0. Now, if this property ok, what is this? This is basically probability of x n plus 1 equal to j ok and the time spent in that particular in the current state right is less than or equal to u given the history up to now which is basically where the process started x naught t naught x naught x 2 up to x n or t naught t 1 up to t n or sometimes it is also written as, as a history uh, instead of writing like this you know as a pair x naught t naught comma x 1 t 1 comma x n t n is what you have written ok. Now, this probability is same as this probability conditional probability right. This has the same element, but you know the history right is irrelevant except the current position of the process which is x n that is what you have. Suppose if I assume that x n equal to i, so this become x n equal to i is what then you have and this holds for all n, all j and u which is simply non-negative quantity. Then this y t is called a semi Markov process on the state space S. Yes. Okay. So, the sequence of random variables which is pair now x n t n is called the embedded Markov renewal chain because this is really chain here because discrete time. Uh, embedded because it is connected with the semi Markov or otherwise simply Markov renewal process or Markov renewal chain. The co most common word that is used is Markov renewal process, but this, this is basically this process x n t n right. So, you have x n a random variable on this state space S yes, and non negative random variables another sequence t n such that t n satisfies this is infinity you know you can go back and see like how we are defined CTMC is almost similar, but with some difference here ok. So, this is basically is same as this quantity is what this. So, this is what you call it as a semi Markov process and this pair x n t n is what we call as Markov renewal process ok. And the semi Markov process is homogeneous if this probability is independent of n much like Markov process and we, we are interested or we will be considering only such quantities. So, this notation for this is we call it this as q i j of t to denote the pro transition probability that uh, the, the process at the transition epoch t n it moved to i and then at the next transition is going to happen to state j and the time for the next uh, renewal right t n plus 1 minus t n is less than or equal to t ok. So, that this is what is q i j of t which is independent of n is what. Now, by definition the same Markov process is a pure jump process because you know just like a its sample pass will look like a Poisson process sample paths. So, there is not much thing that you would find in this particular, but Poisson process is increasing. So, this is a pure jump process. So, it could be up or down that is what you will have. Only thing is the duration and everything would depend on 
what is the state that you are going to visit next as well as the current state what is your you are over and so on okay so the sample paths are step functions it could be up and down now by construction the semi markov path is determined by the embedded markov renewal chain and vice versa right so if you know semi markov process then you know the corresponding markov renewal process or if you know the markov renewal process then you know the corresponding semi markov process right so that's why you know it is related to each other what you are looking at is what is the question here okay now you let yt let us take a homogeneous markov process uh, with the state space s and parameters being lambda i which is the exponential holding times that right? the holding time in state i is you know lambda i so the embedded markov chain which we have already you know seen in the beginning which has the transition probability matrix p then yt is a semi markov process with this qij of t okay so this is the time it spends right is is this quantity and with probability pij it moves to state j and hence that's what is this quantity is for all ij of s thus what we are seeing here is that the for a markov process the difference a uh, tn plus 1 minus tn is exponential and independent of the state entered at tn plus 1 right so this is what then you are seeing it i mean in this particular case so these are the two features for which the semi markov process is a generalization of the markov process on a discrete state space basically a generalization of sctmc what are they it removes this condition the condition one is exponential okay let me underline this is exponential the other is independent of the state entered at time t n plus 1 so these are the two conditions right which semi markov process is trying to generalize if this is not exponential and if this is not independent of the where you are going to move to in the next step right it is if it is dependent on that then what you get is actually is a semi markov process and this is the uh, what is the generalization achieved is that these are the two features one is exponential the other is independent of the state and at the next transition right so that is what explicitly it models that you know it is also uh, j and this distribution is need not be exponential it could be any general distribution is what then you will get as because this tn is just assumed this way okay and it's a renewal process tn okay it can be easily shown that for the semi markov process yt with embedded markov chain this quantity uh, xn tn so this chain which is basically if i look at this xn alone now xn alone which is a markov chain and this is what is called the embedded markov chain which we have already talked when you talked about the markov process itself okay and its tpmb if i denote it by p then this relationship holds right as you can see from here as t tends to infinity what you will get is the limit is what is your pigt right which is nothing but this case now according to its embedded markov chain xn we call the sem corresponding semi markov process as irreducible recurrent or transient if the embedded markov chain is irreducible we say semi markov process is irreducible if the embedded markov chain is recurrent then semi markov process is recurrent if the embedded markov chain is transient then the semi markov process is also transient much like when we generalized the dtmc to ctmc we call in a similar fashion right it's the same way we are doing it here so an irreducible recurrent semi markov process is regenerative we already said the recurrent markov process is regenerative an irreducible recurrent semi markov process is also regenerative as one can fix any initial state and the times of visiting this state to be a renewal process then you get the regenerative process now let us define this fij of t to be qij of t divided by pij okay 
Now, if P i j is strictly greater than 0, otherwise this is 0. Now, what is the interpretation? The interpretation this, you can write this, right? This divided by q i j of t divided by p j, right? So, q i j of t, what is that? You know, you know and divided by p j, right? So, that means from the definitions of this q and p, p is this, q is this, right? So, this is what the q i j t divided by p i j, right? So, p i j is this, q i j is this, right? So, that is what you have here. So, th from that we can give the interpretation for the f i j of t to be this less than or equal to t. The inter even times are less than or equal to t given that x n equal to i and x n plus 1 equal to j. So, this gives Suppose, if I call this T i j as the conditional sojourn time at state i given that the next transition is to state j. Earlier we said unconditional sojourn times are you know the holding times in state i we have seen for the process are the residence times. Now, this is the conditional sojourn time meaning that currently it is in state i next it is going to go to state j and how long it is there going to be in state i is what this quantity is which we call it as T i j. Suppose, if I call it then this T i j less than or equal to T is what is your f i j of T which is what is basically this which is given by these two quantities. Okay. So, the unconditional sojourn time is just that then you have to which is if you call this as tau i as the unconditional sojourn time of the process being in state i. Then you know it is basically given by this expression right. So, simply you have to multiply by the corresponding probabilities and then sum it over all possible g right. It is not the example, but you know how you can you know put other processes in terms of this Marco renewal process. Say for example, a pure birth process is a Marco renewal process with this representation q i j of t is equal to 1 minus e to the power means a i of t right which is equal to 0 and otherwise and p i j of p i j is 1 for j is equal to i plus 1 and f i j of t is equal to q i j of t and tau i is simply t i j when j is i plus 1 or you can say t i i plus 1 that is what is uh, tau i in this particular case. Similarly, birth death process and other process can also be written appropriately. Okay. So, what we have seen? is a Marco renewal process becomes a Marco process when the transition times are independent exponential and are independent of the next state visited we have seen. It becomes a simply a Marco chain when the transition times are all identically equal to 1 there is no everything is 1 that means each step that it moves. So, it becomes a Marco chain okay. uh, uh, DTMC to say. If the state space S is trivial meaning that it has only one state then the increments are all iid right because it is there is only one state so the increments are all iid and in this case this tn defines a renewal process so that's how you know this is generalizing both marco process and renewal process to marco renewal process or semi marco process so these are used uh, in the study of certain queuing systems now, we will just state uh, asymptotic behavior though we are not going to prove this. Suppose, if you are interested uh, for the semi Marco process y t, the asymptotic behavior as to what happens when the t tends to infinity of for this process. Okay. So, we said that semi Marco process inherits the properties from its embedded Marco chains, Marco chain, right. And the if the embedded Marco chain suppose if it is irreducible and positive recurrent and it has a stationary distribution nu j that means that it is a nu j is the long run proportion of the time you find in the state g and also it is the pro proportion of the time you know you spend in state j that is what you remember right. So, nu j is basically this exists and is given by the solution of the stationary equations in that particular case right because this is DTMC. So, it is pi equal to pi p case, it is nu equal to nu p will what will get this set of equations. So, a solution to this will give you this. Then, 
if I look at this PT, which is basically the semi Markov process spending its time in the state K, then this one would expect that this PK to be proportional to this mu k times mu k, where mu k is basically the expected sojourn time in state k until the next transition happens at time t n plus 1. Okay. So, this, this is the duration mu k and this is the proportion. So, this is then the p k would then be proportional to this mu k and hence my p k would be given by this expression because now this p k must be sum to 1. So, this is what is the expression that you would get here. Okay. So, one can rigorously prove this for which you know you have to start from regenerative process some proofs and then uh, you have to apply that one here to get to this. But it is a intuitively idea this is clear. So, if p k if I want to look at it which is the long term probability of finding the semi Markov process in state k then this will be connected to the embedded Markov chain stationary distribution and the expected sojourn time in state k in that embedded Markov chain which is nu k mu k proportion out of the total proportion of this is what then you will be getting it here. Okay. So, this is what uh, is the what then you would get as asymptotic behavior. Of course, one can study a lot, but you know we will not need that much. So, whatever little bit relevant what is this process? So, what we are going to do when we consider semi Markov process is that we are going to consider the embedded Markov chains and then study because the underlying process is a semi Markov process and we look at the embedded Markov chains for the analysis of the queues. So, what is this embedded Markov chain would mean and what is the semi Markov process? We need to uh, get an idea and that is why like we have now gave this idea of simple ideas from what is a semi Markov process, Markov renewal process, how it generalizes from Poisson and renewal processes, our regenerative process means what and so on is what we have seen in this case. Okay. So, now with this ideas in mind though it is not very elaborate, it is very brief, it is sufficient enough uh, we will go ahead with analysis of semi Markov queues in the subsequent lectures. Okay. We will see next in the uh, following lectures. Thank you. Bye.